The ceremonial opening of the legal year 2015 was held at City Hall in Central. Chief Justice Jeffrey Ma inspected the ceremonial guard mounted by the Hong Kong police. Secretary for Justice Rimsky Yoon noted the recent Occupy movement had brought about blatant challenges to the rule of law. Although the movement has come to an end, his worries concerning challenges to the rule of law have not disappeared. Some people put forward civil disobedience or the pursuit of universal suffrage as justification for their unlawful conduct. Whilst I believe the overwhelming majority of our community would not dispute the importance of universal suffrage, one should reflect on the fundamental question. Can there be universal suffrage without the rule of law? I would, without doubt, say not possible. The reason is obvious. The rule of law is the bedrock of democracy and universal suffrage. Constitutional development or universal suffrage without the rule of law is no different to a house without foundation. It is accordingly difficult to see how there can be any valid reason for resorting to unlawful means for the purpose of pursuing universal suffrage, especially when such unlawful means would prejudice other people's rights and disrupt social order. Any contrary contention would in effect allow people to disregard the law as and when they see fit, which is the antithesis of the rule of law. Mr. Yoon said another challenge concerns the question of how to appropriately deal with the people who were involved in the unlawful activities that took place during the Occupy movement. From time to time, persons charged with criminal offences, especially offences relating to public order events, asserted that they are victims of political retribution. Such allegations are completely groundless and are often made with a will to gaining political knowledge. The Department of Justice would never allow prosecution to be used as a political instrument, still less as a means to achieve political revenge. Speaking at the same event, Chief Justice Jeffrey Ma also noted the relevance of the Occupy protests to the rule of law in Hong Kong. In my view, these recent events have demonstrated the respect that most people have for the rule of law and emphasize once again the pivotal position it occupies in our community. He said the injunction proceedings in the courts, which took place during the protests, demonstrated an adherence to the rule of law. People expect the court judgments and orders will be respected and complied with. When the court made its decisions in the various injunction proceedings, it did so according to law and this was plain to see in the detailed, reasoned judgments that were given. When the Court of Appeal rejected applications for leave to appeal from the decisions of the Court of First Instance, the Court again did so, explaining in detail the legal reasons for its conclusions. All this illustrates the practice of our courts, deciding cases strictly according to law thereby fulfilling the constitutional mandate of the judiciary. Whatever one's beliefs or motives, the rule of law and all that it represents must be respected by all, whether the government or the public or sections of it.